Hi, I'm Jesse from Jesse's Designs. This is the Jesse's Designs Needed Podcast, episode 11. Welcome if this is your first time here. I hope that you enjoy everything that we have been preparing for you. If you have been here before, welcome back, and I hope that you enjoy this episode as well. So if you have a nice drink, bring it along, bring your work in progress, and get ready to see everything that has happened since I last recorded episode 10. On this episode, I'm going to show you my work in progress, just one. I'm going to show you my finished piece, which is also one. I'm going to show you some of the a piece that I'm going to be working on, and I'm going to show you something exciting coming from Blue Sky Fibers. I'm also going to share with you some footage from our visit to my family in Colombia. We went to Cartagena, Barranquilla, Santa Marta. And on this episode, I think I'm just going to talk about Cartagena first because it's quite a bit. And I'm going to leave for episode 12, Barranquilla and Santa Marta. Besides, I think I'm going to be too emotional to talk about everything on just one episode. So stay tuned. I will be happy to share with you so many things that we enjoyed over there. Now, let me start with what I am wearing. I'm wearing this dress from a Colombian designer named Juliana Perez, and I'm going to leave on the description below the link to her Instagram account in case you want to see more of her beautiful work. And I'm also wearing these earrings that I made with crystals. And you can see similar earrings on my website in the ready to ship section. No, not in that section. You're going to see more of these handmade jewelry in the handmade jewelry section. So there are similar earrings there and they are just so pretty, so beautiful. I love the sparkle and that touch of sparkle brings up any outfit. So there are some in there. A lot of them they have been finding their forever homes and some of those forever homes are in Colombia. So I was very excited to bring some of the jewelry with me over there, but there are some there that I think you are going to love. So take a look at that. Now let's start with the work in progress. So before I left for Colombia, I was working on three sweaters. Um, two of those are finished, but in between pieces, um, so in between working on these projects, I wanted to have a project that yeah, will be in between. So I chose the Sophie shawl from Petite Knit and I have been making a few for the last few months and I think it's one of those patterns that are always going to be a joy to work on. Um, it's easy. Um, it's one of those projects that you can use your partial skeins of yarns if you want to add stripes, for example. So I have been able to work on a few with partial skeins. Some of them um, I have used yarn that is self-striped. And for this one that I'm working on, I'm using a yarn that I have worked with a few times before to make sweaters. So I made my daughter, uh, let me see if you can see the color here. The colors are so pretty. It's um, It has blues, yellows, pinks, purples, um, orange. And I made her a top and I made her a dress with this yarn. And I made my mom a top with it. You're going to see that in my Instagram account. I shared a little bit about the look of the, the top that I made for my mom and my daughter. Uh, the same top with this yarn and it has so many beautiful colors on a very sweet color palette and it's cut on an acrylic blend which makes it great for in the spring, for the summer, maybe the early fall, um, not as great for the winter, but it's still a very beautiful yarn to work with. So this Sophie shawl, it's been made with the last that I have of this yarn and yeah, I'm a little bit bummed about it, but you know, you can always get more yarn. So this is how it is looking. I already finished all the increases and I recently started working on the decreases. 
for this shawl. So I'm on the final on the final section, if you can say it like that. I think you could see those colors better over there. So you might see me doing that a, a little bit um, just to get away from the microphone and get closer to the camera on the computer and show you some things closer. So this is a beautiful colorway and I think in the next couple of weeks this should be done. As I am gonna be working on another sweater, um, I'm gonna show you that in a second. So I'm going to be needing again um, a pattern that I can work with in between bigger, bigger projects. So I'm going to show you the final piece, the only final piece that I have right now. And if you watch episode 11, you saw that I was working on the adult version of the Milagro sweater. So I brought my sweater with me to Colombia because I was hoping to work on it over there. Um, just to add more meaning to this piece. I was hoping to block it. I was hoping to get uh, pictures of this final sweater in Cartagena because I think at the time, if I am correct, I just needed to finish the second sleeve. Um, I think that's all I needed. But apparently all the little times that I got to work on this project were not enough because I did not finish the the second sleeve over there so if you go on my instagram you're gonna be seeing a few pictures of me working on this sweater in different places there in colombia so i made a promise to myself and i know i mentioned this before that because we haven't been with my family for quite some time I was going to be there as present as possible. Um, I knew that I didn't want to be busy. I did as much as I could before we left. Um, some things that I had to send to yarn companies or um, some other responsibilities, um, yarning responsibilities. I tried to finish everything that I could before we left because I just wanted to enjoy our time there and I didn't want to be worried about deadlines. So... I brought this project, I work with it um, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there, but it was, it was not enough time to finish it. So I finished it here and I tried it on. It's not blocked yet. I still have to block it. But when I tried it on, the adult version of the Milagro sweater, I really liked the fit. So I knew with the Milagro sweater that I wanted something oversized um, because it gets quite chilly um, in starting in the fall here in the house. And I wanted something to wear when we are making fires outside, when we are sitting by the fireplace, when I'm sitting on the sofa just knitting and I didn't want to put the heat all the way up and feel like if I was in Colombia. So I'm looking for pieces that are oversized that, oversized, that are going to keep me as cozy as I can be. So let me show you this one more time. I use yarn from uh, Lion Brand Yarn. I use this one from Skein Tones and the color is Adobe. So this is a beautiful color that it's perfect for fall. So I knew I wanted this color and it's 100% acrylic. Now, one thing that I noticed when I tried it on is that even though I love the fit around the body, I like the length anyway, it's easily customizable if you want something shorter or longer. I really liked everything there. With the sleeves, I just made a um, modification. I wanted everything to be the same as the child version. If you're not familiar with the Milagro sweater, uh, it's available in all of my shops in children's sizes from 2 to 16. So I wanted to keep the adult version the same. But one thing that I noticed is that um, the cuff are a little bit too wide. Even though I made a modification in the cuff, it's still a little bit too wide. So in the second sample that I'm going to be working on, 
I'm going to try to do something different as the child version, which is to add some decreases on the sleeve. So I'm going to uh, try that. It's still going to be an oversized sleeve. The cuff is still going to be a little wide, but not as wide as the one that this one has. And then I'm going to continue uh, making decisions. So the yarn that I'm going to be working with for the second sample is this one. Let me show you. I'm going to be working with fisherman wool, fisherman's wool, and the colorway is birch tweed. So it's a beautiful colorway. Um, it's like a off-white with speckles. It's a beautiful look. I have used this yarn for other projects before, and I love the overall look of this of this yarn. So I'm looking forward to see this. And that's one of the beauties of working on a piece like the Milagro sweater, which is a top-down sweater, raglan construction, um, is that it's a basic piece that you can customize to anything that you want. I have a few yarns that are ready for me uh, to work on with stripes, for example. Uh, I'm going to show you later when I talk to you about Cartagena, the top that I made for my daughter now, how it looks on. I know that you saw that on episode 10, if you, if you got to watch that episode. And it's one of those patterns that you can add whatever you want because it's like a black canvas. Sorry, white canvas. <laughs> or black or white. Um, so it's like a white canvas and you can do anything that you want with it. So I'm going to be working with this yarn and I know that the look with speckles is going to be really pretty, but I'm going to keep you posted as to how it looks at the end. So that is um, my future project, uh, my finished piece and my work in progress. Now, something exciting um, that I wanted to show you before I start to show you footage of Cartagena is that um, you might be familiar with the fact that for 2023, I was accepted to be a maker for the Blue Sky Fibers program. So I have been able to work on a few pieces with the yarn. And I'm so glad and excited to know that I'm going to continue with them for 2024. So just expect more beautiful projects with the yarn that they have. And I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to the Blue Sky Fiber family for trusting in my work and um, to try to make justice to the beautiful yarns that they have for all of us. So one exciting thing that is happening with them is that on September 1st, um, this episode is recorded before September 1st. So I'm going to try to have it um, to have it uploaded by the time that they are releasing this yarn. September 1st is the day that they are going to be releasing their fall and winter collection. And very nicely, kindly, they send me some samples of the new yarn. And you can see a little sneak peek over there, but I'm going to show you how the yarns look like. And this Coming week, I am going to be working on a new design for this, for this yarn, which is perfect for fall and winter. So let me show you. This yarn is called Woolstock North. It's a super bulky yarn. It's 100% fine highland wool, 107 yards, 150 grams. So it's enough yarn to make yourself a nice beanie just with one skein. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm designing a beanie for this yarn and I have four colors. I just want to say excuse um, the fact that I, it might look a little bit weird with the microphone and my son just got this microphone for the music production that he does and he's like you have to try this microphone mom uh, for your podcast so I'm finding my way uh, <laughs> around around the microphone so I might look like I'm stretching or exercising or something so excuse the look of that I just don't want to I don't want anything to happen to it. So I'm going to show you the four colors that I got. And look at this.
They are so beautiful. I had a little bit of a hard time choosing um, what color was I wanted. I was very tempted to say, could you send one of each? Uh, but I didn't want to be that greedy. <laughs> so I chose these four colors. Um, this colorway is called Northern Lights. This colorway is called Golden Meadow. This is going to be beautiful against a fall um, background or a winter scene. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. It reminds me of, let me show you, this rich beanie that I made in a similar color and I fell in love of that like lime green tone when I was working on it. By the way, thank you so much for the warm reception to the rich beanie. So many of you are working on this, on this beanie, and and it's really nice to see the yarns that you are choosing, the colors that you are choosing to work with. So thank you so much for the warm reception. I hope that you make so many more for the fall and winter. Now I have two more colors. This is called Rusted Roof, and the last one is called Gravel Road. So they are here in my special bowl that I have on my desk. Let me show you. There are too many cables for my taste. So I have this bowl. And in this bowl, I usually have um, the projects that need my attention like right away. Uh, maybe it's because the... Um, Dateline is happening soon. Maybe it's because um, I need to find testers sooner than later because everybody is getting so busy for the fall and winter. Whatever the case is, um, the projects that need my attention right away are over here in this bowl because this is the first thing that I see when I sit down at my desk. So I'm going to be working on that. This, this coming week, so it's, it's exciting. I'm going to be showing you progress on my Instagram first and also here in the community section of YouTube. So that's a section that I discovered in the last few months. I never saw that a community section in there, but it's a way for us um, to continue to stay in touch with you um, before we release a video or anything that we are doing just to share something with you as a community. So stay tuned to, to get to see uh, the texture of this new beanie. Okay, I think that is all that I wanted to share with you about um, all the yarny things that have happened since the last episode. And now let's move on and show you some footage of Cartagena. So many of you are familiar with the fact that I am not from the United States. Uh, maybe because of my accent, you could say that right away. I was born and raised in Colombia. I'm from Barranquilla. And my family had also um, two other homes in Cartagena and Santa Marta. So these are places that we went to through our, I mean, always. We always went um, to all these places. And I haven't seen my family um, since COVID started. So it's been a while and I was so excited to go see them again, to see, to meet my new nephew. He's just a few months old and to see my oldest nephew again, he's five. And it was very exciting um, to go see them. So when we started uh, the trip, we started with Cartagena and then we went to Barranquilla and then we went to Santa Marta. So again, in this podcast, I'm going to share with you some of the things from Cartagena and I hope that if you haven't been there um, that you consider going there at some point because it's a beautiful beautiful city it's my most favorite city in the in the whole world and it doesn't matter that I grew up there or going there so often it doesn't matter um, that you have been going to other places we have traveled quite a bit as a family it's still my, my favorite city. Um, I think it's a mix of the beauty of it and a mix of obviously all the memories in there. So I'm going to show you as I talk 
some of the videos that I took of how Cartagena looks like. So if you want to see or if you want to learn more about the history of Cartagena, uh, you're more than welcome to take a look at that. And you can Google it. You can go to Wikipedia. So to make a long story short, Cartagena is divided in the old city and the modern city. So in the old city, you find the castle and you can go and take a tour of the castle and see everything that was there, the things that the Spanish did in there. And you have also the modern city where you have obviously the modern buildings and more hotels and residential buildings that are modern. In the old city, you also find hotels and, and you have so many restaurants is a delight to the senses. So the first day that we were there, um, we stay, we went to the old city and we spent the evening there. The following day, we also stayed in the old city. We went the following day to the modern city and the last, um, and I think that was it. I think the last day we went to the old city again for, for just a little bit um, because there is um, there is never enough time to take everything, everything in. So it was a really nice experience to be able to be there with my family again the last time we went. My kids were obviously younger and they didn't remember that much. So I think this time they are going to be remembering more things than the last time. One of the things that they both mentioned is that there is always something going on. It's always there is always um, music. Um, you know, all the people talking, but the music is the thing that that it was a little bit of a shock in a good sense um, for them. And I think we noticed how, let's say, noise, noisy everything is when we came back here, and everything was so quiet. Uh, we live in Connecticut. For the ones that do not know, we live in the forest. Um, so the only thing you could hear were the birds. That day, that first day that we arrived, we did not even see one neighbor. We didn't even hear a car. And so it was a little bit of a shock to go from all the excitement of the noise, what is going on and everything to the silence and the quiet and the peaceful surroundings. So there is in Cartagena, um, it seems like there is music in every single corner. You have somebody rapping in one corner. You have somebody else in another corner playing the harp, another one playing the violin, another one playing uh, the accordion in a group with the vallenato music. You have on top of that, the musical groups that are performing everywhere, which is amazing. It was just absolutely beautiful to see all these um, men and women dancing in those um, in those, in those kind of performances that we were taught when we were at school, we always had dance class in my school and it was the typical dances with the big skirts and, and all of that. So it was, it was really nice. I felt so happy to see my children uh, seeing that because one thing is to tell them and one thing is for them to see it in person. And they, they had a blast. They really liked it. So it was from, Vallenato music, to cumbia, to mapale, to violin, to pop, romantic pop. And it was really cool. Um, they didn't even know where to look because there was so much going on. So we took a, a tour in the carriage with a horse and we went around the old city. So we got to hear more of the, the history of, of the city. So Cartagena is known for, in the old city, for the balconies. And there is a history about the balconies. Um, people that live there, they try to keep these balconies looking as beautiful as possible. So they are full of flowers. Um, in the old city, if somebody owns a place in there, they have to make sure that they keep up with the place. And and it was, if you see some of the pictures, um, you see the beautiful doors, you see maybe beautiful homes. And that's what you see when you go there. It's just a few places that you see that they need a little bit more help. But overall, it's just an amazing experience. The architecture is absolutely beautiful. So I think by now you saw um, footage of how the city looks like from the top of the hotel where we were staying in the day, in the night. Now I'm going to show you some footage of a place that I went to. 
um, I was looking for yarn stores. So I found one in the old city and I was so excited because I was hoping to work with Colombian yarns. Now, sadly, they don't have any Colombian yarns. They don't know the reason. I don't know the reason why um, the yarns that you see there, uh, most of them, they come from Turkey. Some of them, they come from Brazil. Some of them, they come from Peru, Bolivia. But we don't know the reason why we don't have any Colombian yarns. So I'm going to, I'm on the lookout for yarn stores in the country that carry Colombian yarn and hoping that at some point when we get to go again, that I can get those yarns from there because it would be amazing to work. I have never worked with Colombian yarns. So um, you can see the thing. So when you go to a yarn store, typically it's not just yarn. They have everything else for crafters. So you find beads, you find, <clears throat> sorry, straps for belts. Uh, you find lace, um, anything that I saw is my, my need to work on needles and threads and anything you can think of for, for making crafts, to make headbands, to make bows, to make dresses. So I asked the, I was talking to the ladies that work at the yarn store and Cartagena is very hot. I mean, the coast of Colombia is very hot and you know, with everything that you have been seeing this summer, the the heat is kind of unbearable in a lot of places. So Colombia is not the exception on the Caribbean. So I asked them, you know, do people buy yarn, um, you know, because it's always so hot. There is no cold season or colder. Um, I mean, it's always hot and rainy and windy. That, that would be it. But it's not cold ever. So they mentioned that, yes, there is a lot of people that buy yarns. And that is one, um, when I made an observation that most of the yarns, they are either acrylic and a lot of yarns that were um, blended with nylon. So they said that most of the people that get yarn, it's because they are making it, they are using it to make bathing suits. So bikinis or one piece bathing suits, um, beach cover-ups, that type of clothes. They say that people, they don't usually make sweaters or tops. It's more for beach. And you can tell that when you go to the beach, it's a whole fashion show of, of everything, <laughs> of, of everything. Uh, so you see uh, a lot of the art being expressed in beach wear. So most of these yarns are for that, a lot of cotton. Um, so they said also they use it for decoration, like to make placemats, table runners, um, maybe rugs for bathrooms, things like that. But it's mostly for beach wear. So I wasn't surprised at that. I would have been surprised if they said that they are using these yarns for sweaters and because it wasn't the right blend anyway from the yarns that they showed me from there. So let me see. Okay. I'm trying to look at my phone because I sent my son all the videos that I wanted uh, for the podcast. So I'm trying to include everything that I sent him. So it's easier for when we are editing to find where the videos and the pictures are. In Cartagena, we also went to a plaza. There is a famous plaza in there with this one of the statues, Botero. <laughs> I was like, I cannot believe that I forgot the name The Botero made. So there is a plaza in there with one of the Botero sculptures and it's surrounded by restaurants, cafes. They are mostly outside. And there is in that plaza a whole area just for makers. So you see there a lot of the people from different ind indigenous communities working on their crafts. So you find a uh, Wayu ladies working on their bags. You find... Um, other indigenous groups that work mostly with jewelry, bracelets, earrings, and fans. It, it was it was beautiful. It was really really nice. So we got we stopped and we got to see like everything from everybody in there. Then we went to um, a cafe in this same plaza, and they make the coffee in front of you. So they bring everything that is needed to make the coffee. I think by now you are seeing footage of that. And we were delighted to see how coffee was made, making me think that the way that I make coffee is not really the, <laughs> the, proper, the proper way to take, to 
get all the flavor that you should get out of the coffee. So it was really nice. This, um, this gentleman, a barista, uh, like he graduated from the from a school where they know exactly how to make the coffee and the whole history of everything. I mean, it was a it was something that I didn't know existed like that. And he he was there explaining to us everything to the point that my son, my son he said that at some point he would like to go through um, through these all of these training um, as well. So we got to drink coffee and they tasted. I didn't taste coffee. My daughter and I we order. Uh, called fruit drinks because we were too hot. And the fact that it was pouring rain outside made it easy for us just to stay there and and get all the whole lecture about, about coffee, where it's made in Colombia, where do you get the best coffee in Colombia, how it's harvested and everything. So it was it was really cool. Um, that was one of the highlights for my son uh, about this trip. Now, while we were there... Um, I'm going to show you now a footage of the music that was being outside of our window. So you had these um, musical performers, dancers, and it was absolutely amazing. During the whole dance, I was telling my kids, we used to dance that at school, like very similar, not exactly the same kind of dance, but very similar. And I was never the best in this class. Um, my teacher always had more than one thing to say. But <laughs> but I passed. I passed every year my dance classes. Um, so it was very cool that my kids got to see these type of dances in the whole outfit, like right there in front of them. And at the end, you know, these they they perform for the people in the plaza. And then at the end, they get one of the hats and they ask you for a donation for it, just watching the show. So it was really, really nice. The more that we donate, the more that they stay in there and the more that they perform. So uh, the people that were there that evening, again, it was raining um, at that time, not raining that much at the time of them performing, but they stayed for longer because we were all so excited uh, seeing them perform. So that was really, really nice. Now I'm going to show you some pictures. And with this, I am going to end um, the Milagro sweater that I made for my daughter, inspired by her drawing with the stripes. She got to wear it in Cartagena this day and I was almost in tears first because she inspired these, these um, cust customization for the sweater with all the stripes. And she was really looking forward to finally wear it and that was the first time that she wore it um, like for the day in Cartagena. And because the yarn is cotton, is the re-up from Lion Brand Yarn. She wasn't hot. I mean, it was a hot day that day, like it is every day. And she was not hot. Uh, she didn't complain. We walked around the old city while, while she was wearing this sweater. And, and she was fine with it. So it was quite something to see. I mean, when I see these pictures that I wanted, that I took to show you, I get to see um, more than just the the piece being made in a beautiful place, but it's the whole thing. I mean, uh, I, I cannot even tell you how many pictures I took of my family there. Um, and just to see them in the same places that I have been at when I was their age, it was quite something. My husband, he's been with there with me before we had children many times, and he loves it too very much. So he didn't need any more loving uh, reminders of how why this city is so amazingly beautiful and so great. But the kids, they got to see, um, a, and I mentioned that in a post, and I said that to my dad and my mom, they get to see a part of me that they wouldn't see anywhere else. Um, this, this was the place that I grew up in. Now I tell you in the next podcast, you know, when they see me with my father, with my mother, with my brother, my nephews, with my aunts and uncles, and it's it's a whole new side of me that they don't get to see very often. So that was very nice, very nice for me um, to share it. And I was so happy that they that they thought that, you know, this is amazing, that this is beautiful, um, that they get to make new memories um, 
just by being there, um, you know, through their own eyes, not through my eyes too much anymore. But now every time they go again, it's going to be everything through their own eyes. So I show you a picture in here of uh, when I'm walking through the streets and I have my Hiba bag from Mood Living. And this is the bag that I got to carry my, um, my sweater, my Milagro sweater that I was working on. So I, and I was holding um, the sweater that I made. And here is another picture of the sweater in a window. The uh, Benny sweater that I made for Rhinebeck. This is yarn from Blue Sky Fibers. And I was just looking, um, trying to make a decision of, okay, where am I going to put the sweater on? Because this is going to be the door that I want featured or the house that I want featured or the balcony that I, that I want featured. And it was hard. So we did quite some walking because everything was beautiful, but I needed some contrast because of the colors of the sweater. So, um, let me see, am I wearing, okay, here, I think you're seeing now, um, some of the final pictures of me wearing the sweater. So when we saw this house, these couple of houses, we saw that, you know, the contrast was, I mean, you could see more the sweater than the colors of the house, for example, uh, the contrast was quite so nice. So it wasn't, it was it was quite something to see all of these doors. So when you go to Cartagena, again, uh, is the architecture that initially draws you to the beauty of the city. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's everything. I mean, you cannot see one thing without seeing the other. The food, the music, the, the warmth of the people. It's happy people, genuinely happy people that you see in there and and it was it was really nice to go and like always I look forward to the next time that we get to go there and hopefully it's gonna be more days um, because it's there is always something something to see so that's all from me for for episode 11 and I'm gonna stop here before I tear up too much I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, let me know in the comments what are you working on this summer, how are you getting ready for fall, for winter? Leave me any comments. Now for episode 10, I mentioned that I was going to give one of you a pattern that I have designed to get you started for the fall. The prize winner is All Time Knits. Um, if you can send me um, your information, that would be great. Your email address. Thank you so much for your comment. And uh, she wrote, how super special you're able to create that sweater from your daughter's drawing. Wow, that is amazing. I enjoyed all your sweaters. Thank you so much for watching episode 10. And congratulations, you are the winner of one of my knitting patterns. So I'll stay in touch with you so you can let me know which one you would like to work on and I would happily send it your way. Now I'm going to be giving two patterns for um for this episode that is going to be the prize for watching episode 11 i'm going to choose a random um, comment so in episode 12 i will announce who is the one that is going to get the two patterns so leave me comments below again anything you want to say um i will be happy to read all your comments and choose a winner for the next episode well, thank you for being here. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. If you think that some of your neater friends would enjoy this podcast, please feel free to share it with them. Before you go, if you like this episode, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, to like and subscribe, and please feel free to share it with your neater friends if you think that they would enjoy what is coming or what has been here at the Jesse's Designs Needed Podcast. Until next time and take care. Bye.